How's it going, mates? This is Mr. Charles, and we're back with Monster Sweethearts. That's the one. I, I, I did that last episode. I, I don't know. I just kind of like being weird and making the the name of the game sound more fantasy by putting a slight pause. Anyway, previously we just met up with Lion. She went to our like restaurant and then was like, "Oh, I've got some money I stole. Here, have 50p." And I'm like cool or 50 cents because this is the American game but yeah now we've taken her home for some reason and now you know we've got to deal with the consequences we've got to deal with Blake who's a nice girl seeing us with a bad girl who she doesn't approve her because in fairness Lion is a bit of an asshole but <laughs> who cares it's fine Lion's a criminal and we're meant to fancy her for that anyway hey Jaylene you're back early uh, thanks to her what would you do what's with the attitude um Okay, well, she's the one with the nice smile, and you're the one attacking my friend. This is why I fancy you for <laughs> I guess. I'm just here to drop off my girlfriend. Huh. Blake and Lion have a stare-off before Lion turns around to leave. Now, because they're having a stare-off, does that mean they're gonna fancy each other? Because that's all it took for me and Lion to bond. But, uh, okay. What was that about, Blake? Why are we blaming Blake? It was lines. Okay, fine. Nothing. I just don't like her, and I don't blame you. But if you got something better to offer, then anyway. Uh, I think you need someone better, huh? Oh, nothing. Come on in. <laughs> you know, I've never seen her actually jealous about someone. I mean, I know like Zant hit on her, but th th this is quite cute. She opens the door, making us the only ones here. Where's Lexi? She's on a date with Chad. Or Adam, or some other. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm glad we kind of focus on what's happening with Lexi, which is, you know, there's no redeeming qualities about Lexi. Why do like Lexi's just like the man of this? Pl <laughs> like, I just don't get why Lexi, throughout all this, has never had really a shining moment or anything you can like about her. Because she's just because she's absolutely straight. She's the straightest person in the game, and that's a bad thing. According to the creators, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about it too much, but still. Uh, Sierra and I are the only single girls here. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me your Casanova tips. Have them jump inside your window and the romance will just bloom. Yeah, see, <laughs> well, you're not going to get a man to do that. So Actually, no, that's the perfect way to get a lesbian relationship. Because a good lesbian would know how to get through the window. Guys, guys aren't agile. Guys can't do that. Guys are potatoes, and no one throws a potato through a window. I don't know what I'm saying either. <laughs> Alright, first floor or second floor? Third floor, because if they fall, then it will be a romantic ambulance ride. If you say so. There's something critically wrong with Jaylene here. Not the money afterwards. I go sit on the couch, turning on the TV, with Sierra coming in soon after. Ah, oh, hey girl. Dan wouldn't stop being ticked off, haha. <laughs> Wait, so are you dating Dan? Okay, fine. Ma Margaret had to get him to calm down. Who the fuck is Margaret? I bet you anything Margaret is bisexual. <laughs> Lexi is the only girl allowed to be straight in this game. What a baby. Okay, fine. The TV is on some scary stories show, which I was about to turn off when Sierra stopped me. I love this show. Well, I like scary as well. Mate, Jaylene doesn't... Oh, you're weird. I'm not weird. And Sierra's not weird. Scary shows are good. Tales from the Dark Side is where it's at. And Twilight Zone, but that's the that's the go-to. So, you know. I feel a pillow hit the back of my head. Instead of being angry, I just kept the pillow. I mean, it's a good pillow. Maybe I could use that to, I don't know, sleep later. Unless, you know, Sierra stole it from me and, you know, it was my pillow anyway. I don't know. Uh, hey, give it back. <laughs> I ignored her as I watched the show. So, we have a guest with us today. Tell us about your experience, Dale. Okay, well, can I get a picture of Dale? I want to be able to picture him in my mind. No? Is he heterosexual? Or maybe this is our- Maybe this is our gay man. Maybe I'll fu- No, that's not gonna fucking happen. I started hearing creepy-ass music from the forest and- and- Mate! Strangers not talking. We know this guy. It's our friend Dale. Why? Why are we just excluding Dale from the story like this? I want the narrative. I want the narrative box to say Dale. Dale is important. God damn it! All right, fine. <laughs> and it made me pass out. Then the government took me to an underground facility. What lunatics? 
I'm all for fun conspiracies, but people can be too- MATE! It's Dale! You gotta- you gotta just goddamn take what Dale- Dale's a, a, a psychologist, he knows this stuff, he knows what he's talking about. We're just university students. Dale's been there! D <laughs> okay, maybe I'm making a bit too big a deal of this. Alright, yeah. I try not to think too much of the world around me after learning about monsters. Is this where we come up with that monster switch? Like, oh god, monsters? How did my life change so much? I mean, we had that like three or four times and <laughs> when we were playing this game. Or like, you know, in, the, in each episode. Doing so has helped me not have a panic attack over it. Ignorance is bliss and all. Yeah, I guess. I was in the library helping Taylor put away some books. Oh, I haven't seen her in ages. I wonder how she is. Hey, Jaylene, can you take these books to the historic fiction section? Is Lion gonna, for some reason, be in the historic fiction section? I mean, I, I think the game is hinting that she's actually a smart girl behind all the, you know, pyromaniac and that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if she was there, but let's see where this goes. I take hold of the books going over to the said section. As I was turning into the section, I bump into a body. Is it Lion's body? Is it Lion's jacket? Did we bump into Lion's jacket? I fancy her jacket. I, I don't mind Lion so much. I date her for the jacket. Oh, uh, watch where you're going, dweeb. Uh, I... I was about to say something till I see that she's holding a couple of children's... But... Children's books? Okay, I would have accepted, like, tech books or something like that, and I would have accepted nothing, but children's books? Okay. Is she, is she psychotic as well? I mean, that's a plus for me, as long as she's, you know, relatively nice, but... What are you doing with those? It's... It's none of your business. Now run along. Miss Lion, come read to... Um... <laughs> Does she read to children? That is adorable. Uh, okay. Miss Lion, come read to us. Get away from me, I don't know you. The children don't listen as they push Lion with them. I follow her to the kid's corner of the line. <laughs> oh my god, this is the best! Well, I didn't expect this from Line. Listen here, Dork, I'm only doing this for money. Now remember, kids, Miss Aaron is Line Aaron. Okay, I mean, fair fine. Is doing this for free, so <laughs> So please please so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I didn't think she'd be the type, but I guess deep down she's a good person. And that's what this game was trying to hint, I guess. Don't laugh. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Aaron, for doing this. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, move so I can work. She pushes past us towards the kids, who all sit around her, listening intently as she starts reading to them. Jillian, have you put those up yet? Um, <laughs> why is line reading? Why not? <laughs> she has dyslexia. She can't read. Okay, what? I listened closely to her reading to the kids. Then the turtle pulled out a gun on the rabbit, telling him, you may be fast, but I'll show you something faster if you don't show me where the money is. What, what, kind, of st <laughs> what kind of child story is this? Okay, fine, good, great, even. Oh my god. <laughs> Does the librarian know? She's too busy to know lines making it all up as she goes. <laughs> oh, this is a do I tell you what, no lesbian story has ever made me laugh this much, to be honest. So she can't read at all. Well, she can if the text and font are good enough. Her foster parents never really went out of their way to help, I guess. Because, you know, they were straight. And straight is a bad thing. Anyway, but come on back. We have to finish putting these up. But, but lines reading. This is funny. She drags me back to helping her. After I got done with that, I went and got some books for Line. I go over to the kid's corner seeing Line all alone trying to read. She closes the book angrily then moves on to the next one. Is this her first day or something? Is, that, is this like the only time she's doing it? Is this because <laughs> she was taken, like she was caught and I was like, okay Line, your, your punishment, we're not gonna get you to go to jail, she's gonna let you do some like probation or something. And you have to read to children. I don't know, I just find it funny that this is what she's being forced to do. Line here. She looks up at me, then towards the comic books I'm holding. Ah, oh, that might work. What's that? Comic books help those with dyslexia. I don't know how we'd know that, because we're doing English, but whatever. I don't need those to read. She turns away from me, back to her book. 
Seconds pass before she snatches the book from my hand. What's so different about these? The font and how it is set up helps those with reading disabilities. It will make reading easier for you. I'll try it. She then gets up, leaving with her busy with reading the book. Does reading comics actually help? It may help, not every dyslex dyslexic is the same, but it can help. I mean, I'm gonna try and bear that in mind if I ever meet a dyslexic person. Which, you know, I've met one or two, but I've never really been close friends with them, alas. Uh, plus, then she can read some age-appropriate story for the kids if it does work. I mean, did, wasn't, didn't she was, she was holding children's books? So it's clear that she wasn't, like, reading from the books themselves. She was just like, oh, look, the rabbit and the hare. No, the tortoise and the hare. Let's, let's give them guns. Let's make it like, some kind of, like, street gang story. We'll see tomorrow, eh? Okay, I'm walking back later than usual since we have a lot to get done. I'm nearing the sorority house a couple of blocks away when I suddenly hear running. Oh dear, is Lime running from the police again? Are we going to be- are we going to pretend to be a house now? She's going to hide inside us or behind us or whatever. I look behind me to see Lime on fire running towards me. That's, and she, you know, she, she's just there. She's fine with it. She's just like, ah, oh, whatever, I'm running. Look at that face. Ah, oh, it's only the police. Just another day, I guess. She holds me by her chest as I hear more running going around us. She doesn't let go till the people running up, people running after her go past us. Okay, was that police or was that gangsters? I mean, I don't know. I, I for some reason think she's probably part of some gang, even though this is a village. Okay, ah, line. Don't say a word. I'm going to ignore that, but focus on what the fuck you just did. Whatever. Excuse me? Tell me what all that was. Why? It doesn't concern you. It very much does if walking down the street is dangerous. Uh, they are people who I pissed off, okay? Did, I, I, like, more people? I mean, you already pissed off my boss? You, you might have pissed off the people in charge of the children, to be fair, because you were teaching them about, you know, street violence. You pissed off the... Sheriff who was just you know trying to look after you like and you pissed off the police at some point So <laughs> I, I see you've got a talent for pissing people off She stands up to walk away, but I grab her by the wrist. Oh, I just bit my tongue there. Well, that was horrible <laughs> Wow, that really hurt Gr Okay, cool. I'm gonna have to keep talking. Oh good Okay that was really painful. I think the lion's trying to injure me from the great beyond. Where do you think you're going? Somewhere. Whatever you get into, the sheriff will blame on me. I can't just let you run around. Wait, is she still our responsibility? I thought we gave that, like, we gave that up ages ago. I mean, if you say so, but whatever. What are you going to do about it? To be honest, I don't know. She has to be around 5 foot 11, in addition to being a monster. And we're like, you know, 2 foot 1. <laughs> that would be tiny. But I could see it being a thing, because Jaylene is known for her tininess. Anyway, she yanks her hand away, giving me a glare, telling me to not to follow. I'm not some child. How does burning stuff no one cares about a problem? I mean, is the stuff no one cares about in a major public building? Because then people might care. Only because, you know, um... Well, there might be other people present and they might, you know, burn to death. That is something people do if they're exposed to fire. Well, you know, maybe it just gets a fire extinguisher, but whatever. Uh, that's not the only thing you get in trouble for. Listen, how about you stay at my house for the now? What? Jillian, is that a good idea? She might burn your house down, for a start. And for seconds... <laughs> Why are we being nice to... I mean, I know, like, we can't get rid of her. I don't know. I'd... If there's some kind of fire maniac running round, I'd kind of be on the side of, you know, not invite her back round. But, oh, I don't know. Why would I do that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? It's a safe place for you to go and, you know, we're, we're dating now, apparently. To keep you safe from the guys you pissed off. Mm. And I have food. Fine. <laughs> okay, don't make it sound like a chore. I'm actually trying to get to know you, I guess. The rest of the walk was quiet as we approached the sorority. Alright, and you know, everything looks nice here. It seems like the other girls aren't home, so that's a relief. I better take one last look at this place because it's going to burn down. <laughs> it's going to burn. See that sink? That's 
that thing's probably made of like metal, plastic. So I'm burn. It's gonna burn. It's gonna burn to the ground. I'm gonna I'm gonna see a burnt tap on the floor. Anyway, <laughs> help yourself to whatever you want in the fridge. Burn the fridge. Ah, <laughs> uh, now I'm turning into a pyromaniac. It seems like I didn't even have to say a thing as she went straight for the fridge. I lean on the wall watching her eat. I, I'm surprised we have food in the house. So, you know, logically she'd have to get like a kettle ready or something for all the ramen cups we have. Because again, that's the only thing we eat. What on earth do we have in the fridge that you can just eat? Just, uh, not even cook upon a microwave. Okay, fine. Taking a look at her, she's remarkably skinny. I mean, yeah, I noticed that. She lifts her arm to chug the milk, and I can see her ribcage underneath. Is it, like, so thin that it's, like, a few centimetres long? Like it's paper. But, you know, thick paper. I don't know. Strange paper, I don't know. Uh, huh. I look back up at her, seeing that she's chomping down on all the food she could find. Okay, well, so far we know that all that's in there is milk, and that's a liquid. So... She takes a hold of raw bacon using her fire to... You know what? I didn't think of that. I forgot she could cook with the fire. When was the last time you ate? Mm, she finishes the deli meal she was eating before responding. Maybe last Monday? Foster parents don't care. Yeah, I'm, cu I'm curious about those though. Like, why did they adopt you if they're just going to kind of leave you to it to be a criminal? And also, why is it the only straight parents in this game are dicks. <laughs> I mean, uh, the only good go we've had so far was Victoria's father, and that wasn't even much of a person. We didn't even get much of a profile on them. They're just, you know, scientists. Okay, usually the sheriff gives me money each week for food and stuff. It's about 20 bucks. Sometimes she... Wait, so you have $5.50 and you spent all of it at the... She must have begged some of that, surely. If she only has 20 bucks a week, why on earth would you go to a burger place? If I had 550, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be like buying a lot of custard creams or biscuits or I don't know what Americans call biscuits, but you know, bready, crummy, sweety goodness. I swear they have another word for it in a minute, whatever. Uh, sometimes she doesn't, though, depending on if I'm on good behavior or whatever that means. So I wasn't given any money this week. Oh, good. Well, you do the crime, you do the time. Or you don't get money, I don't know. Is that legal? It doesn't matter, she's the only police around here for miles. If she's the only police around here for miles, how come there were... Were there multiple police cars chasing you? Or is it just the one police car? I don't know. Plus, I don't like any police, so... <laughs> I don't think any criminal would normally like any police anyway, but... She plops herself down on the couch with some chips, turning on the TV along with turning back to human. Ah, now she's her sexy old self. Now, babe, why don't you give me a soda? Ah, good. You're also the control freak. Fetch us a Mars bar love type. That, that, that's the British equivalent. Apparently, husbands that try and, you know, control their wives tell them to fetch them Mars bars. In, in British society, that's what my parents taught me. My, my, my parents aren't like that. It's just, you know, that's how they stereotype. Uh, oh, fuck you. <laughs> oh, a little bit of an attitude. Hey. Uh... The door opens up with Sierra walking in. Yeah, we just got a stranger or something you've just saw once or twice eating all our food. Don't mind them, Sierra. They're just, you know, hungry. What is she doing here? We're dating, blockhead. Sierra's eyes go wide, staring down at me. <laughs> that look is now reserved for Line. Only Line can have that. Like, at first it was like, I know that's the thumbnail I had for the, like, she used those eyes for the thumb, the first thumbnail I ever made. And that <laughs> Now she just gives line the stare. That's the line face. Oh my god. I pull Sierra away from line into the kitchen. Don't pay any attention to her. She doesn't listen to me as she continues to stare at line. She just doesn't know what to do. She's just confused. She doesn't know why she's here. <laughs> oh, I love it. Jesus. I go around her, leaving Sierra to be creepy in the kitchen. I sit on the couch adjacent to the one line is sitting on. She doesn't spare me a glance as she continues watching her movie. When she's done eating, she looks over to me. What are you doing over there? Don't want to sit with your girlfriend? I love you too, but well, I don't trust you. I definitely don't trust you. Hmm. I look at the TV to ignore her. It was playing a gory movie. Why is that the only thing? That, is it the gore or something about monsters? or Nothing fun, you know? 
Currently, it was amongst a gruesome murder scene. Oh, that's nice. I feel the couch sink beside me as Lion sits next to me. Oh, cute. She squishes my cheeks with one hand and she looks at me. I love you too, dear. What are you doing? <laughs> or maybe I don't love you then. She looks at me before she puts her lips against my forehead. Are you fulfilling some kind of deep sexual fantasy? <laughs> well, deep fantasy. It's not really a sexual fantasy. You're just going to kiss me on the head. That was, you know, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of sexual perverts in the UK. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah is, she, is she taking this more seriously than she should be? Huh? That's not allowed. Oh, Sierra, okay. Sierra doesn't seem to like that. Man, my, my roommates are very protective, aren't they? Sierra picks up a pillow and throws it at Lion straight to her face. <laughs> Lion lights up the pillow <laughs> and throws it back. <laughs> God, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't put it past her. Anyway, excuse me? You can't kiss her here. Why not? We're dating. Go upstairs to do that. I don't want your cooties on the couch. Don't think that's how cooties works, but okay. Fine, darling. Let's go upstairs. Huh? Let's make out and have hot lesbian sex. Nice. Well, thank you for doing that in the presence of a child. Or a Sierra. Basically, very similar things. Ah! Sierra goes up to where Lime was, standing up and starts hitting her with a pillow. <laughs> Lime didn't even budge an inch. Lime reaches down for my hand, leading me to the upstairs. Okay. And you know what? I'm going to end it here. I'm going to end it at the lesbian sex bit. Because, you know... <laughs> I, You know what? Lime is... The funniest character. I will give Lonely credit here. She's not like, I'm not desperate to see where it goes because it feels like it's going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to pretend to go out with her. And it's going to be like, actually, I like you. And then we'll have a moment of, you know, fun. There'll probably be some some kind of villain or some kind of conflict. And then the story will end with us going to the dance and all that. So I, I, no, I'm not too curious about the story, but I am enjoying the laughs. The laughs is a good thing in this story that I don't think any other play through even Xanth had to be honest but yeah if you want to play the game for yourself and you want to see what other comedic events there are in this in this story we have here there will be a link to the game in the description down below and without further ado the quick screaming channel for this time see ya